This week in IT, Windows 11 just unlocked full passkey support with 1Password and Bitwarden, making password lists more real for organizations. At the same time, Microsoft is pushing a security overhaul across Windows and Surface, saying that they have 34,000 engineers working on security. And Intune admins are getting new tools to diagnose failed enrollments and eliminate local admin access. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Azure, Windows, and Microsoft 365. This episode is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. We've talked about this several times on the channel before that Microsoft has been pushing for the last several years really strongly the idea of passwordless security. Now, there's been limited support in Windows 10 for passkeys over the last, I don't know, year or so, I guess. But now we've really reached a point where pass keys are more realistic to deploy, especially for organizations that are using maybe 1Password or Bitwarden, and of course, consumers using those tools as well. So what this is all about, it's really about you being able to decide, to decide where you can create, manage, and store your pass keys. Not everybody wants to use the service or the password manager from Microsoft. So this latest update is bringing the ability to create, store, and manage pass keys essentially in all of these major places. So either Microsoft's own password manager, 1Password, or Bitwarden. In this latest update, pass keys also work beyond just the browser. So Edge was the first application to be supported with pass keys, if you like, on Windows 11. That's obviously very often where people are logging into different services, whatever that may be. But now there's as wider support because of deeper integration with the operating system across any application that wants to use Windows Hello. So your pass key is essentially connected to Windows Hello. If you want to log into a service, you can use either a pin code or a biometric gesture like a fingerprint or a face ID if you've got a compatible web camera. Now I use Bitwarden as my personal password manager and I haven't tried this feature yet with that, but I have been using pass keys with Microsoft's own password manager. So I use pass keys to log into Microsoft 365 and to Google services. I'm only using this with Edge at the moment and it works pretty well, I have to say. Don't know whether this stuff also works with Chrome. I assume so. Let me know in the comments below. But of course, a lot of businesses are using Edge as Microsoft has been pushing that as the browser to use in the enterprise. And it even came recommended this week. I think it was by IDC as the browser, as one of the best browsers for enterprise use for all of the controls and security features that come built into it. And before you start shouting me down about this, don't forget that Edge is actually built on the same, I think it's called WebKit, the same rendering engine as Chrome these days. So performance and compatibility with Edge is rarely an issue. So we get wider compatibility beyond the browser with this update. We get more choices we can choose the password manager that we want to use, the most popular two options there, 1Password and Bitwarden. If we have remote workers and they're already using Bitwarden or 1Password, you can now allow them to use that to create their pass keys. So it just gives a lot more flexibility and for, hopefully it will allow users to work with their pass keys with less fallback and reliance on passwords now that this is more widely available within Windows. And it just gives everybody more flexibility and options to work with this technology. So if you're planning to ditch passwords in your organization, then let me know what password manager are you using? How are you going to recommend users work with this technology? I'd love to know what you think. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favor to ask you. About 34% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on 13,710 subscribers. I'd love if we could push that up to 13,750. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Seems like it's all about security this week. So Microsoft 
Microsoft has been talking about their Secure Future initiative again this week. Of course, it's coming up to Ignite, which starts next Tuesday. So they're trying to get some of this information out there ahead of the event. And in a blog post this week, it was the Windows blog, they say they have 34,000 engineers dedicated to this initiative. So working on security aspects of Windows. And not only that, the Surface line of hardware to make Windows and Surface the most secure option for enterprises. Now, they say that they're trying to make Windows more secure out of the box. And we've been talking about things like administrator protection, which is a little bit like user account control, but better for organizations mainly. That has also been enabled in this month's update, but it's in preview still. So you have to enable it. It's not on by default and you can do that using group policy if you want to take a look at it so you can test that out. But they're also saying they've been working on other things like memory integrity, smart app control and secure boot pathways to make Windows 11 more secure out of the box. In terms of the Windows and Surface device connection, if you like, they said there's been a strong focus on firmware protections, kernel hardening, block lists, and supply chain security. One of the interesting things that they said about Surface was that all of the drivers and firmware are now programmed using memory safe Rust. So we talked about this probably already a couple of years ago on the channel, that Microsoft is gradually trying to move as much of their old code, their legacy code, if you like, to Rust, which is considered a memory safe language. So just by using that, you essentially reducing the attack service for uh, memory vulnerabilities that are often a problem in Windows. So the fact that they're building the firmware and the drivers using Rust, of course, brings a really secure, solid foundation on those devices. Now, we're talking about Surface devices here. I hope this will you know, gradually start to become the default across the Windows ecosystem, but Microsoft is taking the lead with its own line of hardware. Microsoft also announced new features in its mobile device management platform, Intune, this month. The first one is connected to the Elevation Privilege Management feature, which has been around a couple of years, I think, must be two years ago now when I spoke to Steve Dispenser during Ignite uh, about this new feature. And they've added the ability to uh, bring a temporary elevation for users, but allowing them to keep access to their own environment, to their own files, to their own registry, to their own settings. So that's a new feature that's coming to Intune. And of course, the idea of this is to help uh, organizations remove permanently remove local admin access for end users. They've added a dashboard which allows you to see elevated privilege use across your organization and spot any trends. So that's a new visualization that's been added to Intune. They've also added some improvements for devices that are using autopilot and Android devices, especially for assigned group failures so that you get this reporting if a device fails to enroll and and that is a particular issue, then it will give you that information so that you can do troubleshooting much faster and easier. And they're also saying, and I'm not sure this is a good idea considering the recent problems that Microsoft has had with its Azure front door service, but they're basically saying that the back end of Intune is now moving to the Azure front end service to you know, improve uptime, access, availability, all that kind of stuff in principle at least. And for some organizations, that might mean they have to go and revisit their firewall rules to ensure compatibility. So you do need to check that out. Microsoft is saying that with these new features like the new uh, elevated privilege management policies for user elevation and for the new features connected to enrollment and for potentially new firewall policies with Azure front door that you should validate any changes in your environment before rolling them out further and wider. As I mentioned before, we've got Ignite coming up next week. So they're going to be talking security a lot in Windows. Windows doesn't get mentioned that much at Ignite these days, but they are, I think, going to be really focused 
focusing on Windows 11 security to hopefully push organizations who are sticking with Windows 10 and those extended security updates. So they're going to be talking about a streamlined quick machine recovery tool that will make it faster and easier to fix devices remotely that are having problems booting. So you remember that was something that I think was released back in August for Windows 11. They're also saying now that smart app control is something you'll be able to toggle on and off without necessarily performing a clean install of Windows. That feature was already added several years ago, but it only worked on clean installs of the operating system. So they're saying they're improving that with uh, an improved version of the software so that you don't have to do a clean install of the operating system. So I think that's good news all round, especially for businesses that don't have an IT department. I think that's really useful for them. And they're going to be talking up those security changes and improvements with their Surface hardware. So expect, I would say, that all the Windows coverage is going to be really about pushing the new security in Windows 11 to try and get organizations to move off of Windows 10 faster. And I think that can really only be a good thing. If you found the content in this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now where I talk about broken updates, BitLocker glitches, and again, why Windows 10 just doesn't want to die. I would like to thank again the sponsors of today's video, Chaosoft. But that's it from me this week, and I'll see you next time.